Hello, this is Nicole with Angelic Therapy and Healing, bringing you a general reading for the week of Monday, May 22nd through Sunday, May 28th. For those of you that are gonna be celebrating Memorial Day, happy Memorial Day weekend. It uh, won't be occurring until after the 28th, but you'll be celebrating on this upcoming weekend. So hopefully everyone has a wonderful time kicking off. It's the unofficial kickoff of summer. Safe travels to you. Enjoy the time with your family and your friends. And, uh, Enjoy kicking off the summer. So let's see, we also have this week a new moon. And it is Thursday? Yeah. Thursday, the 25th of May, and it's gonna be around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this, you know, new moons are always good for new beginnings, fresh starts, you know, really kicking things off. So it's a good time to sit down and write down the things that you want to manifest. Maybe if you want to do a visualization board, it would be a good time for that. Now, this new moon is really all about fate. Things that have a higher spiritual purpose, perspective. Uh, it was called, I heard one of the astrologists refer to it as, as the finger of fate or the finger of God. And it really is using this new moon to really look at things from that higher perspective to find something that is of deeper meaning deeper value deeper purpose something that's going to inspire you motivate you to do things begin things that really do have deep meaning that aren't surface that really are going to bring you that deep joy in life those things that you desire that meaning of life because there are a number of people that have just been looking for those things. Like there, there's something in life that's missing. You know, how do I get that thing that's just missing? This would be the opportunity. Use this new moon to work toward manifesting that. You know, take some actual action steps. Because of the other energies, the other moons, and I think it was Pamela Gregory that was maybe talking about it. There's a number of astrologists. If you're interested in learning more about it, go online. She's one of the ones that I like to watch as well as Leo King. But go online, they'll be able to tell you all about it. But because of the way that the transits and plants and everything are lined up, this new moon is also, it's, it's really good to take that disciplined action. Really take the action steps, do those things. Shifting from a place of uncertainty, being stuck, and also when we're uncertain about things, you know, we might not have clarity. We'll hop from one thing to the other and we just can't seem to get the clarity, we can't seem to make a decision. This is the time to make a decision and really do take those disciplined, purposeful action steps. So hopefully I'll, you can all make use of that. Now, for those of you that are asking, I have still not opened my webpage up to new clients yet because I am still booked a month out with current clients. But when I do open that up, I will announce it in the readings so that everyone knows. For those of you that are current clients that have sent me messages about getting in for a healing session or reading, I'm going to be getting caught up hopefully this weekend. You should all hear from me. So look for my messages. Yeah. So for those of you that are interested in the cards that we're using this week, we are using Sandra Ann Taylor's Energy Oracle cards. Going to be pulling also from Doreen Virtue's Mary, Queen of Angels, and the... Gilded Tarot. Oh, and I've also prayed over and shuffled the Lenormans as well as the Sabilas, so if we need any clarifiers, we will pull those as needed during the reading. So, let's go ahead. Actually, let me make sure you guys can see that. Ah, not too bad. Now the question is, will I be able to pick them up throughout the reading and not knock the camera over? Okay. Excellent. Okay, so what we have is the situation, the foundation, the recent past, what you're unaware of, what's the unknown, and then the recommendations. 
the things that they're recommending to do. So let's see. So starting off, the, the two cards that you have are the Magician and the Happy Family. Start off with the Happy Family. See that beautiful family? They're standing by the water. They have a rainbow arching overhead. This really talks about closeness, fun, um, caring, connection, celebration, close connections. It often sometimes will be a warning to not overlook the things that you have because those things hold value. So for some of you, to not overlook your spouse, to not overlook your family, to not spend all your time working or focused on other things because that holds value and to overlook it. You know, for sometimes it can cause families to fall apart. For some of you, not to overlook a potential partner who you could create the family with. Because again, too busy, too focused on work, doing other things. Now, the magician, this card about, you know, having everything that you need to create the things that you desire. You see, he's got the cup, the sword, the wand, and the pentacle in front of him. He is aware of cause and effect. He is aware of how all actions have consequences and results. He's very aware of the power he holds to manifest what he desires through his choices, his decisions, his actions. And that by controlling his will and his action steps, he can, he can manifest, he can create everything that he desires. He can create the happy family. Because he, he uses, <laughs> he uses disciplined action. He takes responsibility for his actions, for his behaviors. He steps into his power to accomplish things, to take those steps. Okay, for some of you that you want, you want, you want this family. You want to have, you want to have a happy home. You want to start a family. You want that rewarding family life. Family is very important to you. It's it's a it's something that you value. But it's something that you're you're wanting to create. But you're the magician. You have everything that you need. So for some of you, you have the family. It's just turning things around. For others of you, you have the person to embark on that adventure with, to marry, to build a family, to create a family with. Everything that you need is at your fingertips. See how he has his hands outstretched here. Everything you need is there. So this dream that you have, this desire to have this, this family, this firm foundation rooted in love, You have that. Oh, okay. But you pushed it away. Hmm. The next two cards that we have, these are the foundation. We have hostilities and the king of cups. Now, hostilities, you can see he has his sword drawn. This is all about, you know, being defensive, aggression, fighting, you know, doing battle with someone. And he's very angry, like if you can look, he's very angry while he has a sword drawn. And, and, and completely in protection mode. Now, the King of Cups, if you look at this card, he's just kind of like laid back, almost a, a melancholy demeanor and he's staring at his cup and cups represent you know emotions and he's staring at it as though there's something missing he doesn't have that he doesn't have that emotional fulfillment although he has everything else because he's he's sitting on his throne he's adorned with riches with finery so for some of you, you have a successful career. You have developed and built your own successful business. And for some of you, you, you have, no, that's not this situation. 
Okay. Well, for some people that would be, they have a, you know, stable, loving home, family, spouse, but you know, their career's in shambles. But they're saying for those of you in this situation, this is you have everything except for the family. That's what you're wanting to get. That's the emotional fulfillment. That is what would fill your cup. But your cup's not full. You don't, because there's a longing in your, in your heart. There's something missing. There is something that you still desire. And sometimes we can spend so much time, you know, staring and thinking about the things that we don't have that it becomes an energetic block. So overthinking, overanalyzing, sometimes because things that, you know, maybe we had someone in the past we thought we were going to have a family with, and then we're sitting there thinking, okay, that, that all fell apart and didn't come to fruition as I thought it would, that we can stay stuck in a state of overanalyzing thinking. We can become very angry and very resentful. And sometimes we can just stay stuck in a state of, okay, I, I don't have this. Why don't I have this sadness, melancholy? It can also become like an obsession that we stay stuck in this, you know, spot of overthinking and we're stuck. And, and it does become an energetic block because we can't even think of solutions or things to do, how to get past that, how to move forward. So for some of you, they're saying that you had that person to develop, to grow, cr to create a family with, but you, you push them away. You block them, you, you put your guard up. And for some of you, the reason that you put your guard up is because you are afraid of having to open up emotionally. You are afraid of having to Share the truth, bury yourself. For some, it's, it's because you're fearful that you have done that with someone in the past and your marriage fell apart or that long-term commitment fell apart. So you're, you're fearful of that ha happening to you again. So what you've done is you've become defensive. And for some of you, they're saying you cut that person off. You completely cut them out of your life. So because you're wanting to protect yourself and defend yourself, even though you want to have a family, even though you want to share your life with someone, you want to open up emotionally because you're fearful of getting hurt again. You, 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 tore, you tore it down, you cut the person off. So for some of you, you've blocked them on your phone, you've blocked them on your social media network. So maybe you blocked them on Instagram or Facebook. You you have totally cut them off, but in doing so, you have cut yourself off from having this very thing that you desire because that person was the key to you getting this, this fulfillment, this thing that you keep longing for. And they're saying for some of you, you know it was that person, but now you're at a point of, okay, you don't know how to fix it. Now the recent past, you have two cards. You have anxiety and the Empress. And anxiety, that it's just that, worry, fretting, also overanalyzing, same as you know, the situation down here with him, overanalyzing, fearing the worst. And same thing, when we're fearing the worst, when we're sad about something, it, it will create blocks for us. Instead of relaxing, looking at things, releasing things, if we sit and we stew on it for too long, it, it just makes it makes it harder to come up with solutions. It makes it harder to move forward. It also makes it harder for us to see that the storm is passing. Like if you can see in this card, the, the clouds, it's clearing. There's starting to be some light. So if we're so upset and distraught about a situation, we will have difficult seeing that that, that stressful situation, that painful situation is passing. It's leaving us. that we would now be able to move forward. Now, okay. the 
other card is the Empress. Now the Empress, it's, it, it's a major arcana. There's actually two major arcanas, the Magician and the Empress. And major arcanas are pretty much, they are things that they're faded, they're big life lessons, they're, they're milestones, they are life changers. Typically they are faded things, they are things that you, you can't control. Like when it comes to, if you're looking at the traditional tarot, your minor arcana, those are things that are daily. They're not huge. It's, it's, it's functioning on a daily, daily decisions in life, daily things that we do. We can control those things. We can shift those things. But when it comes to the major arcana, it, those things are, they're out of our control. They're faded, but they're big. They're huge. They are intended to get us on the right path, keep us on the right path, bring us the things that we desire. And the Empress is one of those. And the Empress is all about creating things, new beginnings, um, passion, passionately creating things and new beginnings. Now, if you look here, like her, her red belt is, is meant to signify, and also actually she has red hair too, but that's to signify, you know, fiery passion and sensuality. And she's surrounded by this ring, which has all of the astrological signs. Of course, a vehicle would stop right in front of my house. Hopefully they'll leave momentarily. But this, it's, it's all astrological signs. And, and that's an indication of all the possibilities in life, all the things that we can have, that we can really have it all. But if you look here, she's got this teal cloak on. And that's, that's covering her curves, it's covering her red belt, it's, it's covering her passion, and blue is representing emotions. So she's not sharing her emotions with the person that she would create a new beginning with, the emperor. So for those of you in this situation, a relationship fell apart. There's a lot of fire, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of love. It's actually, it's divine. If you can see here, there's a cross. But she's not sharing that because her emotions, because she's distraught over what has occurred. So this aggressive behavior, this fighting, this cutting way has left her in a state that she's, she's not sharing that love. She's not creating that new beginning. She's not opening up because her, her she's just emotionally overwhelmed and for some just emotionally drained. And the Empress, she is the mother archetype. So in, in some tarot cards, she'll actually be pregnant. So for some of you, she's the key to this family that you desire. To give birth, give birth in that new beginning, give birth to that that dream, that thing that you've been trying to create. Now, as far as what you're not aware of, we have two cards. We have the King of Wands and Financial Constraints. So if you see that there's cobwebs all over. And this talks about money restrictions, being financially strapped, difficulty, money being tight. You know, sometimes it's a reminder that we should pay attention to our spending habits because there is a difference between things that we need versus things that we desire. And then we have the King of Wands. Hopefully you guys can see that. You have to let me know if the videos are more crisp now or not. I actually got a new phone and it's just a level up in the series that I had, but they've been raving about the, the camera on it. So maybe it'll be more crisp for you guys. So, but if you can look here, he's like staring at the tip of his wand and it's, it's inflamed. And he's just like mesmerized. He just keeps staring at it and he's tuning everything else out. He's just totally focused on that. And all of his drive, all of his ambition, all of his time, all of his energy is simply focused on that. And for most of you, this is talked about, you're totally focused on money, finances, For some of you, it's you're totally focused on creating something to take your mind off of her, 
off of creating this family that you desire, off of creating this marriage, this um, stable foundation. And requited love, they're saying. Because for some of you, the reason that you cut it off and were fearful of opening up your heart and your emotions is because you've been hurt in the past. You were in a relationship that was not founded on requited love and unconditional love. It wasn't. Now, sometimes this card warns of, you know, not being arrogant, not being stuck in a state that thinking you're right and you're always right. Because there are things that we don't see, things that we don't know. Ah, oh, that's what they're saying. Okay. So if you look at these two cards here. You see how he's kind of glaring at her? And she's not even looking. She's looking downward. She's actually looking downward at this cross. But he's just glaring at her. And he's got this wand up in like a defensive manner. So they're saying, some of you are worried That she will use you for your money. You're trying to protect your finances. Because they're saying for some of you, you built a firm foundation financially. But in the past, you were with someone who was simply using you for money. And you discovered that. That broke your heart. That did bring endings. In relationships, marriages, and such in the past. But you're fearful that she wants the same thing. That she's going to use you for your money. That she, you fear that she doesn't truly love you. But she does. If she didn't truly love you, she wouldn't be in this state of sadness and despair. But you're fearful that she doesn't. You're fearful of being used simply for her monetary gain. Which is why you've been so defensive. They're saying, you know, that, that wand, it's all fiery. That's why you became fiery and angry and, and cut it off. You cut her off. Because there's been no, they're saying that there's been no communications between the two of you at all. Now, for some of you, That are in this situation. So when, when you look at, you know, the royalty and you move your way up the court, you'll have knights and then queens and then kings. But then when you get to the top level, that's the emperor and the empress. They're at the top of the food chain. So for some of you, you think that she wants your money, but you don't realize that she has a lot of money. For some of you, she actually has more money than you and you're not even aware of it. And for others of you, you think that she's materialistic because maybe she has nice things, nice car, nice home, and you think she's materialistic. And it, it sets off a trigger, reminds you of a person who used you for money in the past. So since you see that she likes nice things and fine things, it makes you immediately jump to the conclusion that, okay, she's going to be just like my ex. She's just going to rake me over the coal. She's going to use me for money. I'm nothing more than a paycheck to her. Because you want true deep connection. You actually want love. You want to build something that's, that's beautiful, that's a blessing, that brings you joy, brings you happiness. It's a, an adventure that can be counted on. That's an unconditional love. But you're afraid that it won't have any of those things because she's simply after money. But what you're unaware of is she doesn't need your money. She doesn't want your money. She doesn't care about your money. And for some of you, it could have been a situation where there was a loss of a baby. I guess they're bringing up how this card typically, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it shows the empress pregnant with the child. So for some of you, you could have lost a child and it was an um, unplanned child. And you think that she had ulterior motives, trying to trap you, trying to get you stuck. But that wasn't it at all. It has nothing to do with your money. 
And for those of you in the, the, the baby situation, that truly was un completely unplanned. Actually, they're saying like it was, it was divinely guided. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't, the, they were saying it, it was not the right time yet to give birth to the family that the two of you will have together. It wasn't the right time yet, but it was divinely guided. And it had nothing to do with your money. It wasn't something that she wanted or planned. Okay. Now, as far as what's recommended, the first main card that we have is Journey. And if you can look here, she's, she's embarking out on this bridge. It, it's dark, it's kind of foggy around her. This is all about movement. Sometimes this can be talking about traveling. You know, sometimes it can be saying somebody's getting ready to take a vacation, but that's not, that's not what they're talking about today. But uh, it's, it's talking about embarking on an exciting adventure in life, embarking on a new journey, moving forward, taking those steps in order to shift things. Because you see, she's out here all on, all on her own. And, and sometimes we are fearful of taking steps forward, taking that disciplined action. We may have everything we need. We may even know that, okay, this is a divine connection. This is something that God has lined up. This is a meant to be thing. This is a fated thing and everything's in front of us. But because we're fearful, maybe because of things that happened in the past, we'll cut them off. We won't talk to them or we'll block them because we're just afraid. It's not been completely laid out. We can't see everything. You see, she can't see everything. It's kind of foggy, but it's also kind of mystical and magical. You see all the little fireflies and the stars are lit up in the sky. But the path is illuminated for her. She doesn't need to worry about the things around her because the path is clearly illuminated. So for those of you in this situation, your path is illuminated. You know what you need to do. You know the action steps that you need to take. You just need to start taking those steps. At some point, you have to get out of the situation of being stuck and you have to do something. Because if you don't do something, if you don't make use of these things that you have to create the things that you desire, the things that you've been praying for, longing for, trying to manifest. For some of you, your whole life, you've been trying to manifest this. You've been desiring this. But you have to start moving forward. You have to take those steps founded on complete faith, knowing that, okay, I'm on this bridge. I'm feeling a little rocky emotionally, like, ooh, I'm going to have to open up. I'm going to have to share my feelings. I'm going to have to let this person know how I feel about them. I'm going to have to let them know that I love them. There may still be some healing that I have to do to fully open up to this love of a lifetime, to this person I'm being guided toward. Because for many of you, actually, so, okay. So for many of you, bottom of this. <laughs> so for many of you, the card on the bottom of the deck, you already know that this is the one. There's a lot of in intuitive connection. <laughs> it's divinely guided. Oh, that's funny. They like how the cards on the bottom of the deck perfectly lined up for you. So you know that's the one. You've got the intuitive information. You've been intuitively guided toward them. You know that's the divine path. You know that's what's going to lead to your happiness. And you just have to take the action steps and you will have victory. You will have success. You will get this family that you desire, those things that you desire. But you have to not be afraid. You have to trust because some of you are just absolutely terrified. You're terrified of repeating mistakes from the past. For some of you, you are terrified of sharing the truth because for some of you, there were lies. I mean, there's a card in this deck that says deceit and it's very similar colors, although it's a man in it. So for some of you, there were, there were lies, there was deceit. For some of you, you lied to her. For some, she could have lied to you, but they're saying for the majority of you, you were not honest and truthful with her. You were not forthright with her. So for some of you, you're terrified of having to share, share the truth. For nearly all of you, you're terrified of having to share your emotions. Open up, connect. Because you're afraid that, okay, if I open up again, because for most of you, you you've, you've had a failed marriage, 
you've had a failed relationship, which who, who of us have not had failed relationships, but, but you did have one that really did cut you to the core way. It was with someone you thought you could build this foundation, this family, this future, this life with, and it didn't work out. So now you have the person that you're like, okay, I know this is it. I know this is the one. I know that God has given me all the tools, that person, these things have been lined up. I've got all these signs, but oh, I'm terrified. It's, it's going to be a repeat of the past. So you just don't take the steps forward. You stay stuck. And they're saying for some of you, when it does move forward, you need to be open to him as well. And you guys can flip the sexes on this. If it sounds like it's your situation, could be male, could be female, just, just swap the roles accordingly. But for some of you, same thing. You knew he was the one. You knew it would create this happy family, but you've kind of given up on it. You've lost hope. You've lost faith. They're saying when he does come and communicate, because for some of you, he's totally cut you off. He has completely cut you off. But the thing is, he's cut off the very person that he needs to create this. And he's knowing that now. He's realizing that now. He is starting to overcome his fears. When he does come in your direction, you are going to have to open up to him, communicate. Because for some of you, you're going to be so afraid that it's going to be another repeater being cut off. For some of you, there was deceit involved. There were lies involved for some of you. There were love triangles involved. They're saying for some of you, you're going to be afraid that, okay, if I open up my emotions and I let him in again, what if it turns out to be this mess again? So on both ends, you're going to have to trust and you're going to have to take those action steps forward. You're going to have to trust that God is illuminating the path and the way. The angels are helping you. They are guiding you. All you have to do is do it. Trust and do it. Now, the other two things that you have, as far as what they're recommending you to do, is the first card is mother. And at the bottom, let's see if I can hold that up. It says, I hope I open my heart to my mother's humanness and her divinity. So for some of you, you're fearful of taking those steps, you're fearful of moving forward, and it's it's rooted with relationship with your mother, the feelings with your mother, that there are things that need to be healed, things that need to be addressed, dealt with. You need to really look at those, change your perspective and how you view your mother. Because sometimes we'll go through an experience where, you know, our, our mother is very young. So maybe she was very young when she had you and she wasn't around. But what that did is that left you feeling unloved, unwanted. So then when you have somebody come in that this that is this divine love that is your partner, that you will create the thing that you both desire together, you will finally have this happiness that you've longed for, you don't even realize it. Like for some of you, you may be like, okay, I'm totally ready for him. I am totally ready for him. This is going to work. But there are some deep things in your inner child that have got to be healed because you'll think, oh, well, why does he keep running away? Why does he keep disappearing? I'm ready. I'm ready. Why is he not ready? It's because you haven't addressed some things with your mom because mothers are unconditional love. So if we had a mother who was supposed to give us unconditional love as a child and she didn't for whatever reason, she couldn't, she maybe had to be busy focusing on earning money because maybe she was a single mom. Or maybe she just expected you to be the very best and she was very authoritarian, very, she had a lot of rules, she was very strict. Instead of thinking, okay, well, that's what love is. It's being mean, it's, and for sometimes you, know, you could have a mother that was, as a child would seem cruel because she's so critical and so hard. So we you know when we're a child and we have a mom that's being very critical of us. It could be because they are trying to get us to be the best that we can be. But as a child, what that does is that makes us think that, okay, that's what unconditional love is. Unconditional love is someone tearing me down and telling me I'm never good enough. I'm never going to be good enough. I can't equate to anything. If they're always criticizing and discipline me for doing wrong, I am not good enough. But you are good enough. You just need to heal that. 
And for those of you that it, it, maybe your mother was never around, it's also changing your perspective of she had to make money. She had to take care of you. She was doing the best she could do. And all mothers in all the situations, your, your mother was doing the best she could with what she had at that time. And it's really you doing the work to heal yourself at this point. And you'll, feel, you'll find that when you energetically heal it, it will repair the relationship with your mother. And you don't even have to say anything to her. Because doing the inner work that will energetically shift this relationship with your mother, which will ultimately shift this destined relationship that's going to bring you everything that you desire. It's going to finally bring you that one missing piece that you've been longing for your whole life. When you heal this with your mom, you're going to get that. Now, because for some of you, it is, there's a lot of heavy emotions, anger, resentment, abandonment, not feeling loved, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy. But it's not that hard to heal because you have an entire team surrounding you to assist you. So if you have mother healing to do, there are some things that you can do. First off, you know, start doing some mirror work every day. So mirror work is very simple. The eyes are the seat of the soul. Our eyes never change color in all of our lifetimes. When I do healing sessions on clients and I'm taken to past lives and current lives, I, I'll see their eyes. I and mean, I'll see their family's eyes if their parents come up or anything, but the eyes are consistently the same. They never change. That's why when you pass a stranger on the street, if you look at them, sometimes you'll kind of have that feeling like you know them. You don't know them, but you feel like you do. It's because you've known them from a past life. And when you look in their eyes, which is the seed of their soul, you recognize them at a soul level. So what happens is if we aren't loving ourselves because of the relationship that we had with our mother, maybe we feel inadequate. Maybe we feel unworthy of this divine love. We feel unworthy of having our dreams come true. It makes us not love ourselves. So what you do to heal that, it's very easy to do. It, and it will provide you some quick results is every day take time you can do it twice a day you can do more than that per day but stare directly into your eyes in the mirror and say I love you three times in a row and you'll find it difficult to do in the beginning and then as it starts working some people will find that they'll start to cry but then you'll find that you can start doing it with confidence excitement and and when you get to that point like even if you break down and cry at some point that's good that means it's it's working it's healing you it's bringing up reversing transmuting those things that have kept you from loving yourself and you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else this partner your family it all starts with you to let yourself cry let yourself feel some emotions you will find that you're going to get to the point where you're excited you're joyful, you at that point know that you have healed yourself. Now there are some other things. Cassidy Kane has an inner child healing meditation on her webpage and it's Cassidy Kane. I think her webpage is Twin Flames 1111. I actually shared a, an article of hers on my Facebook page yesterday, I believe, but she does. She has an inner child healing. It's very easy. It's a, it's a meditation. I, I think it's, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes, very effective. I would highly recommend that if you have some work to do. She also has a number of other healing meditations. Feel guided to do any of those. And Twin Flame Healers, Jill and Ramey, they have some healing meditations as well. So for some of you, you would benefit, especially the Divine Feminine, you would benefit from their, I think it's called Healing the Inner Goddess meditation. It's actually a series of like five it's five healing sessions that will heal things with your mother that simultaneously even though it's the goddess that does a lot of healing work for those of you that are twin flames to heal you and your other half and it'll and it does a lot of ancestral healing family healing and they also have a number of other meditations that are healing wise so So for those of you that need to heal something with your mother, they're trying to encourage you to start taking those steps this week. Because you've got to start taking those steps then to fix this. And if you don't have any mother healing to do, start taking some steps to fix this because the other card that you have is action. 
And at the bottom it says, today I take action related to the priorities that I have previously put off. And this, in this card, it really does talk about how in order to have our prayers answered, we have to take some action. You know, God, God can deliver us everything that we need. And for those of you in the situation he has, he has delivered you this divine love partner, this person that you will experience true bliss with, true joy, unconditional love. They are going to love you deeply for who you are. And for some of you, you are going to have children together. And for some of you, you, you want to have children. And they're saying for some of you, you need to start taking some action soon because the clock is ticking. <laughs> Say something about this guy. You have to do, yeah, you have to get things moving while you still have good eggs. And uh, I guess for some of you, you're older and you've wanted this your whole life, but, but you have got to take some action steps because God can give us everything. And he has. The angels are helping. You have everything you need. But you have to take some action steps. We can pray all day long. We can do manifestation boards all day long. But when it really comes down to it, if we don't do something, if we don't take those steps forward, if we don't do the healing we're being guided to, if we don't communicate the things we're being guided to communicate, we will simply stay stuck in misery. Because the angels... God, divine, they, they can't do it for you. They can prepare everything. They can illuminate the path for you. But they can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Because for saying a number of you, you have simply procrastinated. You've been putting it off. You've been focusing everything you have on work. For some of you, you, you've even actually started dating someone else. It's almost like a decoy, something to just simply take your mind off the person you know you're meant to be with. Which has made this worse. It's not something that, you know, isn't going to be healed. But it's created more anxiety, more worry. And for some of you, you're afraid that Okay, I know this is the one, I know it's meant to move forward, but you know deep down that your entire life is gonna shift and change the moment you take those action steps. So you've just sat where you are, sat where you are, knowing that this is where you're being guided to, knowing this is gonna make your dreams come true, knowing this is gonna bring you emotional fulfillment, the thing you desire, but you've just stayed stuck. You've not put in the work. You've not done the things that you're being guided to do. But you need to do that. The time to do that is now. You're saying for most of you, you already know what the action steps are that you need to take. So for some of you, it's communications. Well, they're saying for most of you, it's communication. You've cut this person off. You have to repair that. You're going to have to take the action steps to begin those communications. And open up emotionally. When that happens, you're going to have to be open and receptive to them. Both are going to have to let fear go for different reasons. But for those of you that are still uncertain of your steps, take down, take some time to sit down and think about what, what, what's important to you. What is it that you want? What is it that's still missing from your life? How can you shift your time to focus on that? I mean, we all have responsibilities in life. You know, we all have bills to pay. We all have work. We have jobs. We have life is busy. But life is not too busy to make this happen. Those of you that are dodging this and avoiding this, you are doing it on purpose. And they are trying to get you to stop doing that. Because this is the very thing that you need to fulfill your life. Your life will continue to be empty and hollow and lonely. Same for a lot of you, you're lonely. Even they're saying for some of you that you've, you've brought a third party in that you've just been dating to not have to think about the one you're meant to be with. Even that relationship is lonely and hollow. They're saying you, some of you are spending, it's like a new relationship that recently started. You spent time with this person. You play it off like it's great, but it's not. You know it's not. You know that person is not fulfilling you. They are not the one that makes you happy. They're not the one you're meant to be with. You know that. 
And for some of you, that person's even picking up on it. So for some of you, you've, you're, you're nearing a breakup or you have broke up because they know your heart's not in it because your heart's somewhere else. But this is the thing that's going to fulfill you. You will no longer be longing for something to fill your cup by taking those action steps. And if you have to do some healing before you take those action steps, do the healing, take those action steps, then you will have what you need. You will become the emperor. And the emperor is her divine counterpart. Because they're saying for many of you, this is a divine love. You have not stepped into being the emperor because of this fear and these things that have held you back. That have kept you for, from filling that cup, for fulfilling those dreams, those desires. But the moment you do, you'll be completely equal. And you'll be fulfilled. So hopefully that helps everyone. If you've got some healing work to do, you do get, if you're here in the States, you get a long weekend. <laughs> so use that long weekend. Uh, the meditations really, they're not that long, particularly the inner child healing for those that have to do that. The mirror work is super simple, only takes, you know, a minute or two each day. So take the time to do that. And then those of you, they are saying that the others that, you know, you have action steps of things that you're supposed to be doing, primarily focused on communications. Start doing that. Start moving forward, have the courage to do it. So you can finally get those things you desire. So I do wish you all an amazing week. Enjoy your holiday if you're celebrating it. And I hope that for everyone, no matter where you're at, it is filled with a lot of love, joy, and blessings.